On today's show, all the matchups, who are we going to start, who are we going to sit, and a fantastic punishment for Jason Moore. Don't miss a moment. Subscribe right now and leave us some comments about how your season's going. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, Mike Wright. Back with you. I am begging my follicles (laughs) to emerge from my face. So that I might cover this pale excuse for a face as fast as possible. It was funny to see that your beard area had tan lines. <laughs> I, I can see them right now in the screen a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah, you get, you're shaded, you're uh, protected from the sun. Yeah. You've, it's like when you shave your head and you're like, oh, <laughs> I mean, like that looks even worse because it's just real pale up there. Yeah, I think my whole family's rooting for these hairs to grow. <laughs> Fall the goals. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're we're getting there. The weekend should be good. That'll help. Uh welcome in. We've got a busy day Thursday night football game to talk about. Uh it is Foot Clan Friday. We've got NFL news. We got matchup previews to get into. We've got the fantasy face off with the Wheel of Shame. Big day. And uh you know, unfortunately, the wheel of shame. All the all the options on that wheel are is Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, I was I'm gonna have to shave my yeah, beard. I was gonna say, are you familiar with the the Saw franchise? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, that's coming in hot. Wow, yeah, Mike is he's a little bitter from his nose being broken last week. If you want to uh, become a part of this show. Head to jointhefoot.com. You get a bonus episode of the show every week. Bonus. Uh, that bonus episode is called The Footcast. It is a combination normally of, uh, well, we've got some updates we share with everybody, and then we get into the mailbag. Some of those mailbag questions are very spitballer-esque, so we have a good time. We answer questions heading yeah. into the week. It is a special show for the Foot Clan each and every week of the year. And that's at jointhefoot.com. In fact, we also have a another show, a, a what we call the Injury Blitz, that's brought to you by Matthew Betts. Comes out on Fridays for those in the premier tier, and you get um, his in-depth look at some of the injury situations which seem to be mounting. We don't even have starting quarterbacks anymore. Yeah, they're done. We, the, uh, the NFL is just going straight to the backups. I mean, Kenny Pickett went from the bottom of the barrel to a top 10 quarterback in today's NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say from the bottom, and then he just kind of stayed there. Yeah, I mean, uh, we did have a game last night. <laughs> Thank you for the drop, those that submitted. We have Will Levis, who was 22 for 39, 262, no touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked four times. The pressure was relentless throughout the game. It was. It's still very funny. That uh, he can't see it? Yeah. That – and – to his, I mean, you know, we're watching. the The first view we get is not the is not a complete shot of what's going on. I'll, it seemed like to me once they did the replay and they had the camera behind the line of scrimmage and they showed him taking the sack, it still felt like he didn't react to the pressure at all. But it also looked like no one was open on those particular I, plays. I wonder how much of it. He's he's a big boy. You know, he's a strong. Uh, yes. Yeah, he's he he's is, a, he's uh, a big banana. He lifts weights. And you know it's like Dude, he's, he's cut no. That's up. actually that's something that people didn't like about him going into the draft is he was too cut. Not a joke. Really, that was on his 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 scouting report. Wait, that's Silly. a negative. It is a negative. Yeah, sometimes sometimes a a quarterback in particular, if they're doing too much arm work, it can be a negative. Like this was something that got brought up with Tebow at one point in time. 
Like the the whole like uh, two Jim. You want to look soft like no, Peyton Manning. No, no. There's there's a there's a middle ground oh. there where you. I thought the Tebow problem was that he was a terrible quarterback. That hurt. Yeah, that was part of it. But I mean, uh, I get it. Like just range of motion type ex- of stuff. But that's what I'm talking about. It's not always looked upon with. Uh, excitement from gentlemen. I just hit the yoga, lift the weights, and do the yoga, and it, you're good to go. Yeah, and and honestly, I think his ball looks great. Uh, his, his passes um, are his deep ball. It, well, I, all of them. I I don't I don't mind. He has a he has some I, very elite skills. Yeah, he, he, he absolutely does. he really does. And and some of those things are are unteachable. He's got a, a powerful arm. He can make throws that other human beings that see the read they just couldn't possibly do. Uh, so I was I was overall I think impressed even though fantasy wise it was it was glorious he only scored like eleven fantasy points glorious for stuff. you yeah. glorious for not me not for the play- players that might have played him right no because I was playing against him um, but I came away mostly impressed believing in his long term success still still they- amazed at his his uh, lack of awareness in the pocket and that will be a problem that he either overcomes or doesn't but like in a dynasty league. I saw enough to be like I, I would be willing to like try to poke and see if I could trade for him, believing in his more long term outlooks. It, it, I think he's better for the Tennessee Titans than Tannehill. They they might. I mean, we've seen them with some backups in recent history. This is the first time you're like they might have a quarterback. Like it, it's funny. The two most impressive plays to me of the game were when he was annihilated and completed the screen to uh, Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. And a ball that should have been intercepted, believe it or not. It was the play before he was intercepted, but it was the seam, up the seam, looking for Chigakonkwo. It was desperation time. They're trying to get into the end zone. But the arm angle and speed, it was kind of special. It reminded me of uh, uh, Herbert, Mahomes, Allen, uh, very few arm talents like it. So in that regard, very impressed. Uh, He was up against it. His offensive line was beat up all night. He really has one wide receiver. I mean, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and at time, you know, Hopkins is not a, I was watching the end of the game when they were trying to get into the end zone. It's like a lot of these routes are like kind of slow from Hopkins where he just speeds up at the break and he he could use a couple of really talented speedsters out there. Had the major injury to Traylon Burks that turned into uh very positive news today, but that was very scary. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was reported he, he walked onto the bus himself. So that's great. Derrick Henry, 17 for 75, and a Vermont touchdown. Yeah, baby, undefeated. Jalen Warren was electric. Yes, Just he was. Did everything but get into the end zone. 11 for 88. Um, three for 25 through the air. Najee got into the end zone, 16 for 69. Had his longest run of the season. Is it? Had a couple of ugly drops. Uh, but the he has he played much better in the second half of last year. Is there a chance... Oh, you're talking Vermont style. It, is Najee like like a like a baby Yeti? Does well, he does he transform in the winter time as well? Did I get a full cackle from the judge in Deucer's Alley just now? <laughs> yeah, just did, you a big he, fan of the baby Yeti? Baby Yeti. <laughs> I think baby Yeti's that. fine. I mean Yeah. He he looked great to finish last year after looking terrible. He's looked terrible to start this year and I And mean, how that, old that is, was the best how old he's is Derek Henry? Uh, Henry's over 30. Right? And that's about how Najee plays. Najee's <laughs> about like an over 30 back. So I think it makes sense. He's just the runt of They're, the litter. Of the Yeti litter. Of the, you were uh, right for yeah. a Yeti. He's a big guy for a human. I wonder if we can get Google trending uh, for baby Yeti today. Uh, Deontay Johnson, 7 for 90 and his and first. This is the second time when we bring up a name of somebody that's been shut out from oh, the end yeah. zone for a generation. Chris Godwin, we, and then he scored. And now Deontay Johnson, and he scores. So Chris Olave, that's the that's for the upcoming weekend. You can just see. I mean, the, yes, you, the, yes, just yes. The, the relief of Deontay Johnson's soul. He was like, "It's over, it's over," because you know he hears about it more than more than we just talk about it for sure. But he was the clear cut first read. He's going to be, you know, good going forward. If you add up the passing yardage. Uh, the receiving yardage of Jalen Warren, Connor Hayward, Allen Robinson, Darnell Washington, Najee Harris, Miles Boykin, Calvin Austin, and George Pickens, they do not equal the yardage that Deontay Johnson had. So, well, Especially George Pickens. <laughs> well, George Pickens really helps that stat because he finished with negative I, receiving yardage. I have a great 
deal of regret because we talked about this on the Wednesday breakdown that we would still take the chance with, with George Pickens. Uh, well, yeah. I, I mean, had, five targets was the second highest on the team. The The negative one yards seems insane, but uh, yeah, I mean, I sh shared my concern that we haven't seen Deontay and Pickens coexist with them both healthy playing a full game. I, I can't imagine this is it where, will be this. This is where, though, forward. like the, the whole target per share percentage can be misleading for fantasy because he was at 28% or something before Deontay. He's at over 20% right now, and you can still have non-productive games with that level of target share. For players that are targeted more downfield on big plays, um, I, and a target share for, for Kenny Pickett on 30 pass attempts is not – that valuable. I want to caution us from overreacting to this just awful performance from George Pickens, though, because there's two. You know, he had five targets. Two of them in a row. There were there were two. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, it's two games. He had basically a touchdown that was just missed. You know, it was if if he gets that, we're not you know all up in arms. That was in the end zone. Didn't get the foot down. And then there was also a crossing route where like. Bad ball from uh, Kenny Pickett. If if but he hits him in stride, stride. Yeah, that is sure. that, both of them are. I mean, sure, it, yeah. we're basically saying, I think what we said on Wednesday was he has to hit the one when you're not alone. When you don't have the the, the when you give twenty eight percent of the targets or whatever it is to Deontay, all of a sudden you have to hit the one. You don't have a you can't afford to miss them and still have an okay game. Like Pickens, Gabe Davis, hanging out at the same club now. That's fair. I mean, who'd you rather have? Gabe Davis. Yeah, I'd rather have Gabe Davis. Yeah, for sure. That's not what I would have answered three weeks ago before Deontay. Uh, yeah. I can, at, I, at all. Pickens if, was taken over. If if Pickens is just the only guy there, then he's he's far more intriguing. It's, uh, anything else from that game? I, I don't want to move on, but I think we covered the, the major components. Four for 60 for DeAndre Hopkins. Um, optimism around Levis moving forward. Maybe Hopkins is one of those players that's going to have value for the yeah, rest of the year. Yeah, for sure. And and Hopkins leaving this game with a loss is going to get in Levis's ear and be like every play me. Yeah, he did he did try and that that play by Burks. If that ball was inward towards mm -hmm. the field a little bit, he was so close to coming down with it. All right, it's Friday. Put Clan Friday. Every Friday, we give $100 away to FantasyChamps.com where you can get a trophy, a ring, some swag for your league, and we give it away to a member, a supporter at JoinTheFoot.com. Today's winner? Who? Anna Who. That's that's their name. Anna Who. Anna Who what? Anna Who what where? Why? We, wants to know who's on first. Congratulations. You have won $100. <laughs> Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Deshaun Watson took first team reps. Looks like he's going to start Sunday. At least that's the way the practice reports are trending. Jerome Ford limited on Thursday. Brown's running back. So he, he'll, he'll play. Yeah. But it'll be a mix. And we saw last week, like, fortunately, Kareem Hunt got into the end zone. But you saw some Pierre Strong. You saw some Jerome Ford. It's going to be the same story. It's Arizona. You can play Kareem Hunt, for goodness sakes. You can probably play Jerome Ford, too. Yeah. Um, it's Arizona. Mike. Uh, yeah. Amari DiMarcato didn't practice again on Thursday. Not only did he not practice, but they called up Tony Jones. So, uh, yeah. Uh, DiMarcato will not be playing. Oh, no. It will be Keontae Ingram. You can't get a return on your fab no matter how hard you try. <laughs> no, no I, I cannot. So, um, what are you doing? What's your pivot? Oh, A.J. Dillon. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yep, a villain indeed. Drake London missed practice again. It seems really troublesome. Um, DK Metcalf hip injury didn't practice. Lockett limited. Same hamstring maintenance. Both players we expect to play. We do not Drake London. Drake London, I think, has a really good chance of missing this week. What if I told you that Matthew Stafford didn't practice and Puka was limited with a knee injury? Would you uh, be? I would, I would be super uh, unhappy. And All right, I'm telling you don't, that. Well, now I'm unhappy. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, so Puka is a 
Puka's, Try to find another option. Yeah, he's he's on my bench everywhere right now, and I'm so sad about Isn't it. Isn't that the situation where Puka has like 24 receptions or something? Oh, right? for when sure. When you he's doubt gonna, him like this? Dominate. Aaron Jones limited again. Curtis Samuel didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. And was not seen practicing today. I do not believe Curtis Samuel will be on the field this week. Giants have officially ruled out Darren Waller. Uh, we had said he wasn't going to play. Damian Pierce missed practice again on Thursday. The team is con contemplating having him miss a game to let the ankle heal up. And um, I'm going to then contemplate playing Devin Singletary. Yep, the volume will be there. That would you rather play Devin Singletary or A.J. Dillon? I would rather well, Singletary. play Singletary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Into the forecast we go. Yesterday we covered the Dolphins Chiefs, Vikings Falcons, Cardinals Browns, Rams Packers, Commanders Patriots, and Bears Saints. Today we start with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 3-4. and four. Taking on the three and four Houston Texans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Houston minus three. The over under is 40. <laughs> <laughs> I'm is, guessing you were surprised question? at that. Oh, yeah, I, I am. I think it should be like Houston one. I just don't. Or, I mean, I, I would hit the button, but it's just like. Such a small line. Yeah, I just don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, it's true. So here we go. Tampa's lost three in a row. They've been hitting the under, not putting up points. The offense has been struggling. Uh, Houston, the defense has been strong. You kind of expected that to be the case at some point with D'Amico Ryans. Maybe not this soon, but, uh, you know, especially against wide receivers where that's kind of where we're targeting our, our talent on the Tampa side. Mike Evans, you're going to play him. He's averaging 7.6 targets per game, 37% of the team's air yards, right? I mean, he's in your lineup. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And Godwin, he's been good, averaging nine targets, 78 yards per game. Finally broke the end zone curse. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't see how you're going to bench either of those guys, even though this matchup doesn't seem like the best one. And if you if you think about last year, um, the, the passing against the Texans was also really bad for fantasy, not because – D'Amico Ryans and the defense was good just because you could run on them and you still can run on uh the Texans right now so Rashad White I think he's an okay play this week he almost made my DraftKings lineup this week uh oh wow I know I know almost almost yeah. I'm, just, I mean, I'm giving a little love here for Rashad White uh but the last couple weeks 19 opportunities 16 opportunities he's been really involved this matchup is a plus matchup, so yeah. I'm... Zeke or Rashad White? Oh, Rashad White. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think, you know, when you have somebody that catches the football, even if they're underdogs, even if their projected point total is under 20, you get a pretty nice floor, whereas Zeke's floor is, is way lower. Uh, do you like Devin Singletary versus Rashad White? I would take Rashad White, even I, though Houston's favorite in this one. Yeah, the 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 it's a matchup play to me. Um, I. Two two things. One, I believe Rashad White's going to have more targets and receptions. He's had seven and six the last two weeks. Um, and then the the matchup, uh, Tampa Bay, they've been really, really good against running backs not the last six weeks, the full season, last year. So it's not a – It's even though uh, Damon Singlet Devin Singletary might get the entirety of the work, it's not like, a, oh, yeah, now we've got a great play. He's still going to struggle against the Tampa Bay. I, I think this game is going to hit the under. I think it's like nineteen sixteen. I agree. Singletary, you're just you're hoping for receptions. The past two games at an eight percent target share, but that's while sitting at about a you know fifty percent snap share. If if he jumps up into the mid sixties with the snaps, then you know we can get the targets over ten percent. Where's your uh, what's the temperature on CJ Stroud right now? He's had. You know, some underwhelming games of late. Uh, one touchdown, two touchdowns, zero last week against Carolina. You would have thought that Carolina matchup would have been better. Obviously, it's had a huge impact on uh, Tank Dell because he's been bad for a couple of weeks. Nico Collins hasn't had that big game in a while. In this matchup against a really good Tampa defense, are those just tempered expectations for those guys? Or, or Mike, you like Nico. Yeah, you brought him up yesterday. Yeah, I, I think that Nico is definitely playable and, and can bounce back. The The Bucks, they're they're very strong against running backs and tight ends uh, if you adjust for schedule, but middle of the pack against quarterbacks. So 
if I don't know that I really want to play Stroud in a single quarterback league, but the the pass catchers, I'm still good with them. Okay, Dalton Schultz, uh, probably not. No, not my favorite. The Colts are three and five, and they take on the Carolina Panthers, who are one and six now after last week's victory. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Indianapolis minus two and a half on the road. The over under is forty four. Frank Reich revenge game. Ooh, this one's legit revenge. Yeah, <laughs> like yes, you know sometimes a player just goes to another team or something. But this Frank Reich was done dirty, and <laughs> you have to imagine he wants to. He wants to stick it to the Colts so bad. Not that any player or coach isn't really wanting to win every right. week, but a uh, little there's, extra juice. Yeah, there's a little extra. Well, there. and when he wants to stick it to them, he has to gather up Chuba Hubbard, Adam Thielen, and Bryce Young and say, guys, go out there and stick it to them. And that doesn't always work. Right. So you do have a game that, that profiles as maybe a little bit faster paced. The over-under is 44. Gardner Minshew has been throwing the ball a ton. Bryce Young had his best game as a pro last week. Uh, where are the gems here in terms of fantasy football? Like Colts are number one in no huddle rate. Uh, the, I love we've we've said it for weeks. It's been working for weeks. You want to target the Colts games. Um, they're they're continuing to hit the over. Their offense plays fast. Their defense is bad. Uh, twenty seventh, twenty seventh, twenty fifth, and twenty eighth against all positions. Yeah, I mean they they they're just it's it's wonderful. So where the gems are. I'm really excited for the running game of the Colts. Jonathan Taylor, Zach Moss. I think we're going to learn a lot this week. Start of the week, Zach Moss. He's your start of the week, Zach Moss, yes. Um, you know, if if we come out of this game and it's another 50-50 split between Zach Moss and Jonathan Taylor, I mean, just, just lay down and I'll lay down and let Zach Moss just walk all over me <laughs> as deserved. Um you know, but this matchup is phenomenal for running backs. So both should should have good games. Zach Moss this year has been really, really good in terms of efficiency. And Carolina is, I mean, he's 4.7 a carry, and Carolina gives up five a carry. And they're dead last in expected points per rush attempt. So like you said, I, I told a Mike, really good matchup to play both guys. I told Mike yesterday in the studio that I don't think anything on planet Earth would make me happier. Than a, PE, <laughs> than a PED <laughs> for, Zach for Zach Moss. Oh my God. It was like, oh, yes! I knew it. <laughs> he needed help. <laughs> I mean, That's so funny. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the very common year for uh, breakout. Michael Pittman, Josh Downs. I think they're both yep. in play. Yes, they are. Uh, the Panthers defense has been very good. Well, they've been good against the receiving game because they've been so bad against the running yes. game. Yeah, it's a give up one, not the other. Uh, PPR leagues, Josh Downs has been very involved. Miles Sanders is not healthy. At least that's the way it seems. And so mm -hmm. you've seen a lot of Chuba Hubbard. The matchup, again, it's great for running backs on both sides. So Mike has him at start of the week. Number one among all running backs in rush success rate. Honestly, finding that out really validates what our eyeballs have been seeing. Like, from week one of the season, Chuba's looked better than he had looked. Mm -hmm. A real Zach Moss situation. <laughs> uh, but Bryce Young, no, not in a single quarterback league. And I mean, Thielen, you do play, of course. Of course, yeah. And he's just been um, just a stalwart for your team. I mean, it's funny because last week you're like, oh, Adam Thielen didn't do what he's been doing. And he had eight, 11 targets, eight catches. Over you know, double digit fantasy points, yeah, I mean, seventy two yards receiving. He's played seven games. He's had last week wasn't his as great as the stretch run had been. Week one was, you know, not a good game for him. But if you take that whole sample, that is a large enough sample. We're almost you know half of the season there, and you pace that out for the season. It's one hundred and forty receptions, fourteen hundred yards, ten touchdowns. I, I mean. It's one of those situations where if you replace the name and you said, you know, that th these numbers were what, uh, you know, Devontae Smith is doing, it'd be, you know, the, just an amazing elite fantasy mm -hmm. asset. So Would you rather have Devontae Smith or Adam Thielen rest of the season? Would you trade Devontae Smith to get Thielen? I heard another chuckle. Don't do that. Yeah. From, he, he, from he, Deucer's <laughs> Alley. Yeah. That one got Brooks because he knows what, what an awful – man you're being
by asking that question because I mean that trade's an easy that trade gets done probably. Yeah, let me let me honestly think if can Thielen keep doing it. I don't believe so. <laughs> I think he can. They're not adding anybody. The trade deadline's over. Oh my gosh. It's it's more about just can his body hold up to that? I I think I would I think I would make a mistake and trade for Devontae Smith. <laughs> <laughs> the honest truth is you'd make the wrong move? Yes. Okay. I, I think that is the actual truth. All right. All right. Well, we'll move on. Oh, uh, just, just keep your eye on Jonathan Mingo, uh, rookie, but coming out of the bye week. The nine, Mingo H.O. baby. 99% of the snaps. It was five targets, but four for 62. 62 yards. That's that's the, the best of his young career so far. Just someone and charts to, back out there. Just someone to, to monitor. Quick break, back with another matchup. Well, despite firing their general manager, head coach, offensive coordinator, and essentially their quarterback, uh, happy birthday, Jimmy G, oh, um, the Raiders, one-and-a-half-point home favorites against the New York Giants, two and six. That's the Giants' record. Raiders, three and five. The DK Sportsbook line, like I said, Vegas minus one and a half. Wow. The over-under's 37. And um, I feel like they know something that I don't. Well, they know that the locker room is happy. Uh, if you I, have that, seen, was, that was tweeted out, yes. Did you, you see the video of Devontae Adams playing basketball? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they are all the reports are that the Raiders are so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's the truth. Well, maybe not Jimmy G, but. Uh, the yeah. rest of the Raiders are very happy. It's like it's been fumigated. Like the, there is no in, infection. Um, so stick sticking on the Raiders side of the ball, we've we've seen one game from Aiden O'Connell already. In that game, eleven targets to Josh Jacobs, a ton of targets to Devonte Adams. Those two players, I think, get a, a a significant bump up from the last few weeks because of those target shares. You're probably going to bench Jacoby Myers. And wait and see, because a one game sample means nothing. You know, he could come out and spread the ball around a lot and not check it down, and we're going to learn a lot. But for now, what we have to go off of is opportunity and utilization of Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams are world class. <laughs> you know, you can't get much better, so you're going to play them. You're going to wait and see uh, see on everyone else. Well, does rookie quarterbacks rarely support a high level fantasy option at all? Or you see, like in Carolina, where it's a rookie quarterback, but the the vast majority of the offense is going to one player. So Adam Thielen is coming through, the, and that's what I. It'll probably go to. It'll be that to to uh, Devonte Adams. So and it can, should be. It should be. But so the question is, can O'Connell kind of you know break the mold and support multiple pass catchers? I would bet against it. Agreed. Speaking to Jacoby Myers. Yes. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, and, uh, it, and it really stinks. Yeah, the the reason for optimism is this this Raiders team has not ever hit their implied point total. Not one time this year. They, they've been the worst offense in a lot of regards. And the only team really trying hard to compete with them as being the worst offense are the Giants on the other side. I mean, they're in contention as well. That's why this game is such a low over under. Seven of their eight games have hit the under. They finally get Daniel Jones back. That is a good thing. That's also, it throws, like if I had a sneaky play, and I know Jason will just assume this player is in my DraftKings lineup. You're going to say Wanda. Which he totally was. But Wandale Robinson this week is a potential home run. And I know that s sounds shocking, but Darren Waller is gone. Like he he's not right. playing in this football game. You can throw last week out the window. Yeah, Danny DeVito was not going to get the job done. No, I mean, he, he he seven passing yards, just throw that game away. But Wandale is going to be um, a go-to type of player, I think, for Daniel Jones. And I, I am very optimistic about his target share in this offense at this stage of – in this matchup specifically. Yeah, the we will see. Will, the, will there be enough volume because the Raiders third in schedule adjusted against wide receivers, fourth against quarterbacks – and the, we'll see if they can protect Daniel Jones. I do. I think Wandale will catch six or more passes. But is it is it like six for forty? Maybe. Or is it six for eighty? That depends on what he does after he catches it, because it's not going to be down the field where he catches it. But um, 
I, I have some optimism there. We've talked about, you know, the, the quarterbacks aren't in play for you right now. So, you know, from a fantasy perspective, you're watching Aiden O'Connell, you're hoping you get, like you said, a, a concentration of targets on the best players and he suppl- supplies them with value. Yeah, and obviously Saquon Barkley is this offense on the other side. It's a great matchup. Last week, 64% of the team's targets and rushing attempts, that is the highest we have in our system for any running back ever. Yeah, big fan in this in this week's matchup of Saquon. Uh, huge potential. Glad they get Daniel Jones back. It gives him some level of competence on the offensive it, side. Yes. Much, and the matchup's very good. Yeah, if, if not Danny DeVito's in there, it would be brutal. Dallas, five and two. Philly, seven and one. Here we go. Matchup of the week here. DraftKings here Sportsbook go. line, Philly minus three. The over under is forty seven points. I want this game. You want I want this game. <laughs> I want this game to there happen. There was no more for that. That was, sentence. It. That was the sentence. Oh, to happen. I yeah. want this game. Yeah. Yeah. It was I it was, it. It was a little, uh, little creep, creepy. creeper from behind the bushes <laughs> <laughs> with some binoculars. I got my binoculars out. Oh, yeah, for sure. Ooh, is that Dallas mm. and Philly? Ooh, I want it. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> so gross. Um, give it to me. <laughs> give me this game. Philly minus three. Over-under is 47. A game perv. <laughs> <laughs> game perv. Goodness gracious. Can we not go down it's, this train? Mm. Yeah. Can we not? No, no, no. You don't have permission to sound that way just because we contextualize it to the game. No, no, Brooks, <laughs> shut the mic off. Uh, Jason's so into this game, though. Uh, Dak, Jalen Hurts, let's go. Dak's my start of the week. Hurts, you always play. Start them both. Dak, you know, back half of the season, very excited about that. Yep, you should be. You know, DeAndre Swift, you've been playing him. You should. I've seen so many questions about Tony Pollard rest of season. He is he's the actual next man up on the touchdown um situation. Yeah, on the like, touchdown drought. Yeah, the, there was Godwin, there was Deontay. Like Tony Pollard now, well over a hundred touches without a touchdown. He had and he has the worst matchup of the week. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a this isn't the matchup that you would say, hey, let's give Tony Pollard a, a guaranteed touchdown in. Um, he's on pace right now over the last six games for over 1,000 rushing yards, uh, but no touchdowns. Would you rather have Derrick Henry rest of the season than Pollard? Oh, Ooh. for sure. Oh, that's a for sure. That's not even remotely close to me. It was the opposite about four weeks ago. Yeah, but... Uh, what- so I'm, I'm just reacting to your confidence. Pollard has been... Not good. Uh, you know, you, you look at the last month and he has one game over seven and a half fantasy points. It's not. What? Yeah. It's yeah. been that bad? It's been very bad. Oh, man. Well, and they're going to have to throw him this game. And so you'd hope he gets involved in the passing game, but you you know the the ground game is going to be tough against that defensive front. It's To me, I'm still good with Pollard. The Derrick Henry question, that's very difficult. But it's while the matchup is bad, you know, on paper, you know, Philly first uh, against running backs, adjusting for schedule. I expect Dallas to put up points. They have a 22 uh, implied team total. And you just, if CeeDee Lamb goes down at the three, like Pollard's going to get the opportunity. So the, the touchdowns could easily bounce back to Tony Pollard. But it's, it's, it's not the greatest matchup. CD Lamb, put him in there. Brandon Cooks, four plus targets the last couple games. I'm I'm more optimistic about him than I have been this season. Jake Ferguson. Yeah, he's in play. Yeah, he's in play. AJ Brown has been absolutely a game wrecker right now. And Devontae Smith. Like there isn't there's not a player you don't play in this matchup. Yeah, I, I would I would agree with you. Is um, anybody that you're thinking about playing? I think the answer is yes. Yeah, right? I, I I could see Devontae Smith having a bad game against a really good Cowboys defense, uh, but you're not benching him. You you know, seven for ninety nine and a touchdown last week. Um, so yeah, I I wait. Was he my touchdown guarantee? Was he Devontae Smith? I think he was. He might have been hmm. last week. Yeah, and I, he scored. Yeah, all yeah. right. I think he was. Yeah, he was fantastic. Uh, I hope he cashed. 
<laughs> so Goddard as well. Yeah, play him. Uh, let's talk about Sunday Night Football. The Another good one. Oh. Buffalo. Calm down, Jason. <laughs> Man. Whoa. This game. <laughs> tell me about this game, Andy. Please I'm not, tell me. I'm not telling you about this game. <laughs> I'm, I won't tell you about it. Tell me the line. Mike, Mike. Tell me the spread. Yeah, stop. Stop. <laughs> Don't ask for the spread. <laughs> Don't ask for the spread. Oh, this game is special. Oh, man. We just I lost half our audience. This game. And I don't blame them. I want. Bills are five and three. Game. The Bengals are four and three. The Cincinnati. Cincinnati's uh. minus two. He's got binoculars. <laughs> The over-under is 49 and a half. Look, you've had a lot of nicknames in your day, Jason. <laughs> this is, this is not want, one you want. I don't want the game you don't want. You don't want to be the, the, the peeping Tom of fantasy football. That's not what you want. I just want to see this game so bad. <laughs> the, ba the, ba oh. the Bengals oh. and Joe Burrow have turned it around lately. I was yes. so, so upset when I started, you know, I... You look at the matchups early in the week. Um, you 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 see some things that stick out, and I just ran to make my DraftKings lineup and put Jamar Chase in. I didn't care how much he costed. It's like, oh no, it's Sunday night football. He's not on the slate. That stinks. This game should be awesome. Um, you know the the Bengals have just looked really good lately with a healthy Joe Burrow, and I'm in on that. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, no. All right, Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase. Let's go. T. Higgins, set up for success. Bounce back last week. You're going to get some big games from. Andy's not able to. Handle no, he's this. not. Were you laughing at the getting? So Brooks said he was <laughs> yeah. getting the air going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to, we have to cool. Cool, cool Jason down. <laughs> He's getting hot and bothered. It's hot in here, man. <laughs> oh, man. Just me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. It's super just you. Just you. Uh, Josh Allen. Yep. Josh Allen. Oh. Excellent. Let's play him. James Cook. Uh, we don't know what the future is going to hold with Leonard Fournette's involvement. So are you just still playing him this yeah, week? Yeah, yeah. You play James Cook, um, and then you just you hope that it stays, you know, a heavy, heavy usage. The, yeah. He's a good player. It's, oh, James it, Cook is it's just one of those things where you don't want him to be a, a gadget guy eventually. Yep, yeah. and I don't know that he will ever break out of that mold for Buffalo. the the bigger the the bigger question, and I don't think we'll get the answer for it this week, is just is Leonard Fournette used in passing situations because James Cook excels in it, but it, 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 like chuck, thank chuck, you chuck, get those chuck, dump offs, but. James like that's not a it's not a guaranteed week to week target share for James Cook and if someone starts eating into it that would be that'd be a problem a and, big problem and Leonard Fournette came out and he said that uh, <laughs> he arrives in Buffalo and he tweets out how Buffalo is colder than a penguin's you know what derriere derriere uh, it's gonna get colder buddy yeah, it's not that it's cold gonna be, this week just just wait Stevon Diggs of course Gabe Davis big week last week now this is the um, this is Gabe spreading the, the 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 foliage over the pit. You know, this is he piles it up like a reception mm -hmm. and a reception and another reception, and then it suddenly looks like the ground, and then you leap. You, I'm gonna dive in these leaves. Yeah, and you leap, and and you end up in the in the spiky pit. pit. Yeah. Sometimes, however, I I'd be playing him. Yeah, I mean, you've got a high over under. You think that this is a Sunday a, night football a game for a chance at a shootout? Um, he had 12 targets last week. I don't know how you don't play him unless you're just going on the process of I think he's going to be tricking me. <laughs> so that's not the process <laughs> I'm going to play out. Um, so Gabe Davis is in, and Dalton Kincaid, he's my start of the week at tight end. No team is worse against tight ends if you adjust for schedule than the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm -hmm. Dalton Kincaid was on the field should be great. a ton. Now that Dawson Knox is on IR, should, should be a really good start. It made me... You know, it made me happy the way – like, Kincaid has more athletic ability than Dawson Knox does. And so you saw 
Like some of the big plays he made were both plays I didn't really think Dawson Knox could have made. Correct. Especially that sideline toe tap uh, down the field. So it was nice to see. Monday night, we get the Los Angeles Chargers at 3-4 and four against the 4-3 and three New York Jets, who stole a game from the Giants last yes, week to, did. to stay in the thick of it. Well, he, speaking of stealing games, we, yeah. we didn't talk about this on Thursday Night Football, but those Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, my God. That, they're 5-2. and two. That's S-T-E-A-L-E-R-S. <laughs> yes. I mean, they're 5-2. and two. Do you know what record that is? No, they're not 5-2, and two, Wait, are they? Are they... No, they're five and three. I five think. and three is that? They're what five it is? and three, yeah, because they would have dropped to five hundred. Uh, but five and three is good enough to be tied with the 49ers. Yeah. So if you thought, wow, I yeah, mean, five and three. Yeah, I mean, Mike Tomlin is, is he the best coach in football? Because we've seen Mike Tomlin's winning with the Trubisky's and the the you know Kenny Pickett's and the backups, and Bill Belichick is losing with all those guys, right? So I'm trying to quickly look through it. They look like they are the only winning team that has a negative point of course differential. They, of course they do. <laughs> of course they do. They are they are five and three and they are negative thirty. Wow. See Matt Canada on the sideline yesterday? Yeah, because he wanted to get a real good look. No, oh, Tomlin wanted to be right up in that ear. <laughs> That's what it was. Tomlin wants to be don't do this. Do do this. Let's talk. Yeah, I was calling your kid into the room. It was like, yeah, ah, hey, yeah. hey, Canada, come here, <laughs> come, come, come here. I want to show you something. It's like my Canada's been driving for a long time. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna go with you. It's like the yeah. driving permit. Yeah. It's like I'm sitting in the passenger seat, and you know what? Give me a break. All right, Justin Herbert, Zach Wilson, Monday Night Football, Chargers three and a half point favorites according to the DK Sports Book. The over under is forty. Herbert. Has had a, a little up and down this year, but he's on pace for 4,600 yards and 31 touchdowns. Really want to see Quentin Johnston get the ball in his hands. To me, that's part of the problem. Part of it is, uh, you know, you, you always say targets are earned, obviously. You need to be doing more in the route development. I don't think he's doing that stuff well. But when you have a young first-round talent, there were times he got the ball in his hands last week on a small crosser, a la first-year Michael Pittman. And he made plays like he, he moves very well after the catch. And if you go back and watch the film, that's the stuff I'd like to see them do more of. Joshua Palmer did not practice again. This is what happened last week. He needed up a game time decision. I normally, if he didn't practice on Thursday, I'd be like, I don't think he's playing Sunday, but they're playing Monday. So I do think that there's a chance Palmer toughs it out. The fact that he could go back out there seems to infer that it's not something it's something that he needs to like recover up from, like a bruise or something, but not maybe something that needs a week off. Yeah, I, I, I'm still not going to play Palmer, and if Palmer's you're not, out, you're I'm just not going to play Quentin Johnston you're not. either. Okay, no. I would, because of the matchup, I, I wouldn't play Palmer. The, 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 the Jets have shut down the wide receiver. So just position. don't worry about those guys. Yeah, over the last six weeks, they're giving up 12.3 total fantasy points to the team's wide receivers. So, um, you know, Keenan, you're not going to bench. But I don't really want to play either an injured secondary option or someone who hasn't yet shown any fantasy relevance as a rookie yet against the Jets. Brees Hall has looked great. You play him. The matchup is pretty darn good. In fact, uh, you just look at total fantasy points allowed. Bottom third for the Chargers against running backs. And the Jets, they win when they give the ball to Brees Hall. Yeah, he leads the NFL in yards per carry at 5.7 right now. And he good. Garrett Wilson, play him. Absolutely, in my opinion. I th yeah, He gets one, the targets. For sure. It's been a little bit of a drought for him in terms of getting into the end zone, but this is one where the Chargers are probably going to put up some points against the Jets. Yeah, and, and the Chargers' uh, pass defense has just been terrible. This is a matchup you want to target. They're 30th on the season uh, in fantasy points given up to the wide receiver position, and Garrett Wilson has had the targets, 12 targets, 13 targets, uh, 14 targets, all with Zach Wilson. So, yeah, I mean, you're not benching Garrett Wilson this week. I think we got done talking about the Jets. This is the lowest over-under for a Chargers game in the Justin Herbert era. Ooh. That's respect to the Jets defense. Tied. Tied for the lowest. I'm sorry, Mike. I spoke in error. It's tied for the lowest. Yeah. Well, technically, you did not speak in error. Right? It is right. the lowest. No. Mike just wanted to talk. <laughs> I wanted it accurate. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean... 
The question that everyone wants to know, Mike, is do you want this game? Uh, I'm okay with it. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, couple updates on the injury front. Jonathan Gannon still has not decided who's going to start against the Browns. Yes, he has, but he's a liar. And he said he's going to decide on the plane today. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Come on. <laughs> what? Come on. Look, that's... We believe that. I, I have to choose to not believe it. Like, if he is actually doing this... If he wants to get a few cocktails in on the plane. Oh my goodness! Sit back. I can't even. I see can, what I mean. I, I see what you mean. I can't even. I can't even fathom if, I, like, it didn't dawn on me the potential that what if it's true? What if it's true? Mm-mm. And the whole team doesn't know who's starting that quarterback. That's that can't be true, right? It, yeah. But I, man, it if can't. it is, that's, it cannot that'd be, be true. a lot of fun. Chuba's going to get the start, according to Frank Reich. That's new news this morning, like officially. Yes, sir. Yeah. Damian Pierce not expected to play in week nine, a, a follow up from earlier. And Deshaun Watson is not listed on the injury report. Yeah, he just needed a little rest. Yeah, where's <laughs> He's where's good he on to the go. sleepy reports? I, I, I don't even, like, <laughs> I have Amari Cooper, and I'm sitting here trying to analyze this, and I wanted, I wanted him to come back. But he looked so bad. It was like the arm didn't work. Mm-hmm. It was like a broken arm. Yeah. It, he looked the video, like, short video of practice, it looked, looked better. better. Yes. Oh, okay. There was actually some velocity. Let's go. Let's have let's have a game, Deshaun. All right, it's time. Let's get into it. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Well, well, well. Mike ended up on top. I finished second last week, which leaves one name to finish (laughs) third, Jason Moore. I I hope you're dressing me up as Ricky Bobby because right now so far this year, if I ain't first, I'm last. I've got four wins and four losses. Really? Oh, I'm seeing that now. No no second place finish. Three firsts, three seconds, two thirds. Mike is one, five, two. And you're four zero four. I am ah. averaging the highest points All right. of the three of us. I'm a little season. disappointed that I won this week. <laughs> you wanted to stay in that yeah. second? Okay. Well, let's um, let's do it. Wheel of shame. Spin the stupid wheel. <laughs> All right, reading them out. So we got a uh, Viking. Did I see Viking? Where is he? Alvin. 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 <laughs> Wait, is that Alvin and is the Chipmunks? Theodore? Okay. All right. We got a whole shirt. Yeah, you're gonna need to take your hat off. Oh boy. <laughs> just give him some time. I will. Just... I didn't see this coming. So for the people at home, uh, Jason Moore is. Oh, he's well, putting on a red shirt. He's putting on a giant red shirt, which he loves that color. Yeah. Always accentuate. I look good in red. It's got you know you got a you got a oh, hat got coming a here, hat. man. Yeah. So you got a so you got, you got a hat. Oh, the hat's got the A too. And don't forget, of course, your incredible ears. <laughs> ears. They're, <laughs> they're looking good. Looking nice. How would you nice. think? You what do you think? I think I look good like this. Yeah. I mean, it looks like he works at McDonald's. You <laughs> a little bit. You definitely you looked apart. But I don't. Try try the voice again. Try the voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy this. Oh, that's pretty clever. Okay, now I. It kind of let me down. It let me down, and then Mike had something secret in store. You. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Let me talk about it again. Mm. Yes. You want that game? <laughs> I want that game. Oh, no. <laughs> um, All right. Let's do the show. All right. My quarterback this week, Dak. Wait. Is that's my just, voice weird? No. You're, oh, that's it's just, the echo. That's, that's the bleep. Uh, Dak Prescott taking on Philadelphia 6,500. I assume we all have Dak Prescott, yep. but I do as well. Oh, no. Mike, you have him too? Yeah, I have Dak Prescott. Son of a gun. My running backs, Alvin Kamara at 8,100, Kareem Hunt at 5,500. My running backs, Alvin Kamara at 8,100, and Saquon Barkley at 7,900. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Alvin Kamara, 8,100. You, you can't not play Alvin Kamara with the PPR factor right now. And newly announced starting running back of, you, of the Carolina Panthers, I will be playing my start of the week, Chuba Hubbard at 5,000 against the Indianapolis Colts. So am I the only Kareem Hunt manager? I mean, we got to go through the rest of the roster. Okay, we'll I find don't out. Have Kareem Hunt. Uh, my wide receivers. I don't I, have them either. I am actually double stacking with Dak. I'm going CD Lamb at 8,200, and Brandon Cooks at 4,400. Oh, and then I am sliding the sneaky Jamison Crowder into the lineup at 3,400. I have CD Lamb and Jamison Crowder as well. Um, at the other wide receiver, I've got. Pop Douglas at 4,000. You sound so silly. What was, what was your second one? You had Lamb, Douglas, and who? CeeDee Lamb, Jamison Crowder. So he's got two of my guys. Pop Douglas. All right. <laughs> I have CeeDee Lamb, of course, for the stack. I do have Pop Douglas at 4,000. And then I have Christopher, or Christian, not Christopher, Christian Olave, 6,300. Olave, do something. For the love of God, do something against the Chicago Bears. My tight end is Trey McBride at 3,700. Despite the fact we don't know the quarterback, I'm going Trey McBride. I just want the volume of targets that's going to – it beats out everybody at that price point. My flex is Saquon Barkley at 7,900. Oh, he got you. And the Giants defense at 2,300. Yeah, we're all going to have the Giants defense, okay, because they're the cheapest and they're playing against the Raiders. Um, my tight end, I figured you guys would have Trey McBride, but I pivoted to Luke Musgrave. He's only 3,300, and the Rams have given up a lot of points to the fantasy tight end position. My flex is Bijan Robinson. Bijan. Do something. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, my tight end, it's Logan Thomas at 3,500. So we're, we're live on tight ends, all, brand, all different tight ends. 3,500. Of course, I have the Giants because I don't understand. We all have the Giants. I don't understand the line. They're the cheapest defense. But they play the Raiders. On DraftKings this week, I think they're going to be just fine. And uh, I also have one quick note. Bijan Robinson, do something. Oh, you have him. I have. I mean, it was... This Six, is a weird 6100 for Bijan Robinson. This is a weird week because we have a ton of crossover. Like I believe Jason, you and I have Dak, Kamara, Lamb, Crowder, and Saquon and the Giants. Yep. Wow. So it's going to be tight. Oh man, I'm so anti Barkley this week. Yeah, you are. I'm so anti Trey <laughs> McBride. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, I'm... Is, this is fun, Mike. <laughs> Thank you for letting me do this it just brought it home so much it's spectacular i almost want to have you read the end of our segment <laughs> but i don't <laughs> know if our sponsor would them. like yeah. that that was fantasy face off presented by DraftKings sportsbook download the DraftKings sportsbook app right now and use the promo code ballers to get 150 dollars in bonus bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game that is the code ballers only at DraftKings sportsbook does this mean that Jason has been shamed twice as much as either of us, Mike? Uh, Despite the fact he has the most total wins? <laughs> what do you think about that? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because I've got the most points. I've still outscored you boys. <laughs> Please end the show. Please hit that button. All right. That is it. Join Mike on Sunday for Ballers Live. He will... Help you with your starts and decisions heading into a ton of great games. Thank you for joining us this week. Alvin, see you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.